Hello and thank you for watching this Mutation Surveyor webinar. The topic of today's video will be the new features of the Variant Knowledge Database of Mutation Surveyor version 5.0. The Variant Knowledge Database of Mutation Surveyor helps users track positions of clinical significance by monitoring and reporting variants according to chromosomal location. Included in the software is the option to import annotation from external databases such as DB, SNP, ClinVar, DBNSFP, and COSMIC. This annotation can be viewed in new options in the graphic analysis display, and it can also be used to filter variants in the mutation report. In addition to the external database functionality, Mutation Surveyor 5.0 also allows users to construct a custom database of commonly made mutation edits such as deletions of false positives or sequencing artifacts. These entries can be saved and queried for future projects, allowing users to easily track common edits made within a mutation project. To import database annotation into Mutation Surveyor, a whole human genome reference must be downloaded and saved on your computer. To start the download, navigate to the Tools menu at the top of the screen and select Import Reference to open the Import Reference Wizard. This wizard will guide you through the download process, but if you have any questions, please contact us by telephone or send an email to tech underscore support at softgenetics.com. After the reference has been downloaded, it can be imported into Mutation Surveyor by navigating to Tools Track Manager. Here you will be able to select a genome build in the annotation databases associated with that genome. To select the recently downloaded genome, click the Set button at the right and navigate to the directory that contains the reference. To import annotation databases such as dbSNP, dbNSFP, and COSMIC, simply select the option at the bottom of the screen to launch an import wizard. And if you have any questions, simply contact us by telephone or email. After annotation databases have been uploaded, they will be listed in the Track Query option found in Process, Query Reference Tracks. You may select which databases you wish to query by checking the box to the left of the database name and clicking OK. In this project, I have imported and selected four external databases, COSMIC, dbSNP, ClinVar, and dbNSFP. I've also selected two custom databases of artifacts and false positives. The process of constructing these databases will be covered later in the video. Once your databases have been uploaded and selected, you may begin a project by loading your sample, reference, and GenBank files. It is important to mention that the database features of Mutation Surveyor are dependent on obtaining chromosome coordinates from the GenBank file. So an NT or NC accession GenBank file must be loaded into the project. If you don't have either of these files, you may simply leave the GenBank pane blank like I have done here, load your sample files, and Mutation Surveyor will automatically download the correct file and obtain chromosome coordinates for you. Many of the new features of the database can be found in the graphic analysis display. To open the display, double-click a sample trace on the left, or double-click a mutation call in the mutation report. The first major feature to highlight is the addition of chromosome coordinates to the nucleotide sequence pane at the top of the display, and the mutation report at the bottom of the display. Users now have the option of switching from contig to chromosome coordinates by navigating to the Process Settings Display tab and selecting chromosome under the position box. When this option is selected, the numbering above the nucleotide string is translated to chromosome number and position, and a chromosome position column is added to the mutation report at the bottom of the screen. To monitor database annotation in the sample trace, Mutation Surveyor has also added a track pane at the top of the screen directly under the amino acid pane. This pane highlights positions of clinical significance by placing a green tick mark at chromosome positions where there is annotation. To view additional information associated with the position, you may move the mouse cursor over a tick mark to bring up an annotation box. Each tick mark lists relevant information for that database, such as the mutation, 
Cosmic ID, DB SNP number, and DB NSFP information such as functional prediction, conservation, and population frequency scores. If you'd like to hide any of the databases from the track pane, simply right-click and uncheck a database. In addition to the external database annotation, Mutation Surveyor 5.0 also allows users to build a custom database to monitor and track commonly deleted variants. These entries can be added by deleting any variant within a project. To add an entry, right-click the variant in the mutation report and select the option to delete mutation. Mutation Surveyor will then provide the option to add the variant to the user knowledge database as a false positive or sequencing artifact. After hitting OK, Mutation Surveyor will automatically add the entry for that position to the database. If this is the first variant you have added to the custom database, it is important to ensure that you return to the Query Reference Tracks option to check the newly built database. In this way, Mutation Surveyor will automatically query these positions in future projects. Before moving to the next section of the webinar, I would like to review some important differences between false positives and artifacts. These two knowledge base entries store different information in the database, and as a result, are best used in different circumstances. Artifact entries are designed to track sequencing artifacts, and as a result, the knowledge base stores the mutation call, chromosome position, and read position of the entry. In this way, Mutation Surveyor will track each artifact entry relative to its trace position to recognize if the entry is at the beginning, middle, or end of a sequencing trace. This helps the program distinguish between real variants in the middle of an amplicon and artifacts located at the end of an overlapping amplicon. In contrast, false positive entries are stored relative to mutation call and chromosome position and are not dependent on the read position. To conclude the webinar, I would like to cover the new display options associated with the Knowledge Database. The new version of Mutation Surveyor has also added an annotation column to the mutation report at the bottom of the screen. If a mutation has reported annotation, a tag will be displayed in that cell for the corresponding databases. You can use this column to display more details about the annotated variants such as DB SNP ID, clinical significance, or DB NSFP information. To change these options, navigate to the Track Settings icon at the top of the page. The main settings window allows you to filter mutations based on database annotation. For example, the external databases can be used to filter variants that meet certain criteria, such as clinical significance for ClinVar and prediction scores for DB NSFP. To adjust these settings, simply click on the database version in the left-hand column. The user knowledge database entries can also be used to filter variants by setting an entry count threshold. To adjust these options, set the number of false positive or artifact counts that must be added at a position in order for it to be eliminated from the mutation report. When the count threshold is met, that position will be queried in all other traces in the mutation project. If you would like to change the information displayed in the annotation column of the mutation report, click the Report Display option for each database. This option will let you add or remove important information from the annotation column, such as the track name, group, and identifiers such as COSMIC or DBSNP ID. Thank you for watching this Mutation Surveyor webinar. For more information on the software, or any of our other software packages, please visit our website or send an email to info 
at softgenetics.com. If you have any technical questions about the software, please send an email to tech underscore support at softgenetics.com.